The Warlord Era. The Warlord Era is a time divided by war between civilization and the surrounding barbarian tribes. A wonderful bit of fiction that correlates historically to the Roman Kingdom and the Italic tribes, such as the Sabines, Etruscans, and Latins. As noted before, this direct correlation to real and historical events makes the Iron Kingdom's world more realistic and easier to believe in. This was a savage time filled with bloodshed that marked the founding of new city-states and gave way to the proliferation of fiefdoms and pockets of armed settlements, which defined life on Western Imoran for the next thousand years. This is also reflective of the many areas where native populations were pushed out and their lands were settled by a larger or better armed enemy. Even the smallest towns were able to construct stone walls to protect against the horrors of the wilds. In this time, the priest kings of both Colossia and Card tamed the wilds with law and judgment of steel. By their example, the true law of civilization became a weapon to wield against the barbaric throngs who remained in service to the devourer worm. Colossia, Golovent, and the Shield of Thrace. Between the Mulgar in the west and the inhospitable Bloodstone marches to the east arose a thriving Menite community. Following the examples of the first priest king of Menoth, Sinot, and all who followed after him, this community quickly set to work tilling the fertile land and creating dozens of settlements, outposts, and temples. These communities were united together under the warrior priest Valant of Thrace around 2800 BR. Drawing workers by the hundreds and hauling lumber from nearby forests and stones from freshly dug quarries, they created the hold of Colossia. Colossia was a great fortress that would, in time, become a thriving city. A great line of walls and fortifications was erected at his behest to stand against the Mulgar, the Shield of Thrace. The protected people of Colossia thrived and multiplied. The Colossians had mastered the forging of iron through ingenuity and faith, in small quantities, the steel was forged into blades and given to the priests' chosen warriors. These warriors carried a small portion of the Creator's strength with them into battle. The Colossians also innovated the recurve longbow, a new weapon that proved far deadlier than the short hunting bows previously used. Bearing arms and surrounded by metal armor, the Colossians proved their superiority against the more primitive weaponry and armor of, of the Mulgar tribes. It is said that the Menite priest led soldiers into battle, speaking prayers that set the followers of the worm ablaze. In 2230 BR, the man who would eventually become priest king Golovant was born. Rising to prominence, Golovant proved to be blessed by the lawgiver. It was through Golovant's rule that the kingdom repaid the Mulgar for a thousand years of bloody conflict. He led raids into the west past the Shield of Thrace, successfully tracking down the Mulgar and burning their villages. This, in time, led to the Mulgar rising up and retaliating. In response to Golovant's raids, a champion arose among the Mulgar tribes, a great trollkin chieftain named Horfar Grimmer. He gathered a vast horde under the oath that they would break through the Menite walls and burn Colossia to the ground. Grimmer marched alongside Ogren, Bogren, and barbaric humans, each race bringing their own combat skills and courage, united by their worship of the worm and their desire to see Colossia destroyed. At the Shield of Thrace, a great battle was waged, with the fate of Western Imoran at stake. The Mulgar slammed into the walls in waves, heedless of their losses, while archers high upon the walls rained down a deluge of iron-tipped arrows into the throngs. Hot oil was poured upon the attackers, but the Mulgar continued despite their losses. They fought to place carved logs against the battlements and use them as ladders, climbing to the top and continuing the fight on the Shield of Thrace itself. For a time, they even succeeded in overwhelming the defenders, until Golovant led the army of Colossia to confront Grimmer, bringing with him the fire of Menoth and an imperishable will. Golovant and Grimmer fought, and the Menites gained the upper hand. Golovant led his people in pushing the Mulgar back and regaining the battlements. Horfar Grimmer was captured, put on display, and tortured. Despite Grimmer's defiance, the Mulgar lost their will to fight and shattered into the mountains at the sight of his execution. Golovant did not hesitate to send his armies forth on a ten-year campaign to end the Mulgar. Remnants of this savage tribe scattered across western Imoran to the north and west. 
This marked the last time there would be a unified barbaric people worshipping the worm. After Galavant's death, his son was slain by rivals, and Colossia splintered as factions sought control of the river valleys. In 2051 BR, Galavant's grandson succeeded in uniting the region again. He renamed the capital Caspia. Under his direction, massive fortifications were erected, all consecrated to Minoth. Due to his efforts, it became known as the City of Walls, Kardovich, and the North. Far to the north, a fierce warrior priest named Kardovich was uniting his people. Geth's successors had come into his region to spread the word of Menoth, and their lessons took root among the mighty horse lords. They adopted a written alphabet to suit the local tongues, which would become known as Kurzich. In time, this would give rise to the most prominent northern languages. Kardovic is described as a giant of a man, fierce, proud, and fanatically pious. He felt the calling to unite his people and purge their lands of worm-worshipping savages. Kardovic waged a brutal campaign against those he saw as being in league with the worm. He went directly to their shamans and decapitated their connection to the worm, a tactic that proved highly effective. Many survivors immediately converted to the Manite faith. Trailing behind Kardovic and his brutal teachings were priests carrying the softer lessons of the true law to the remnants of the defeated tribes. By the time of his death, Kardovich had converted over a million savages to the lawgiver. He is credited with spreading Manite worship across the Great North, which would one day become known as Kador. Some remote mountain tribes remained out of his reach, but he ensured that the lowlands were rich in Manite faith. The people who inherited his legacy are known as the Kards, descended from the noble people who once gathered around Kardovich. Virtually all noble families trace their lineage back to him, these crusades also spread the Kurzic language and gave rise to lasting settlements. Despite the warfare that lasted in this region for the next era, the leaders constructed walls around their towns with Manite temples at the center of each settlement. The far northern Rustov, Vindal, and Vorgoy peoples never abandoned their beliefs, though in some cases, old rites were changed and disguised. Elsewhere, the fruits of civilization were enjoyed by brutal tyrants who sought to protect the holdings they seized through conquest, with little regard for the suffering of the peasants who toiled in the fields, labored in mines and quarries, and worked like slaves to erect temples and fortresses.